Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'll be showing you Nestingworks. So Nestingworks is our nesting software. It'll optimize the placements of the parts on your predefined sheets. And it's a great way to utilize the, uh, the sheets on your routers, on your laser ta or plasma tables to the best of their ability. So let's see how this works. So you'll see on screen that I have pretty much just a very simple craft part here. It is a T-Rex made out of cutouts from uh, some particle board. Uh, this is a good example of a very complex assembly with irregular parts, and we need to nest those onto a sheet for our, uh, our product. This could also represent any kind of structures, weldments, any SolidWorks assembly that you've constructed to represent your part, to represent your overall assembly. You can use that in your nesting. You could also just start from a single part and then nest multiple copies of that same part for production. So here we're just going to do this this very complex one, but overall nesting has the ability to do it for a single part or for the assembly. Uh, likewise, you also have the ability to nest from a folder. Now what that would do is it would just ask you to browse to the individual folder and it would look at the part files in that folder as well. That's a very easy way to, uh, to nest uh, individual unrelated parts, um, but it works in a similar way that we're about to, to enact here. So let's take a look at it. So with my assembly open, you can see that I have multiple parts in my assembly. I'll just go to create nesting job. Now, if there were parts in my assembly that were not to be nested, things like fasteners, fixtures, um, anything related to the assembly that is not gonna be nested on my sheets, once I see them listed in this part list, I have the ability to exclude them. I also have the ability to filter my list by the type of solid that it is. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to use everything I have on screen, and I'll just include everything I have on screen by clicking that checkbox, and then just clicking Add. Now, you'll see they disappear from the list, just letting me know that they've been selected. If I want to bring them back on screen, I can just click on Show Previously Added Parts. And now that I've selected my parts, I can click OK. What it will do is it'll take the individual parts from my assembly, begin to look at them, analyze them for material, for thickness, for all the individual properties that are related to the nesting. Um, it'll also confirm the top faces of each one. So I have the ability to take a look at those once it's recognized every single one, but generally it will just use the top face or the upper uh, view of the part from the original uh, part file. So with the nesting analysis complete, you can see that all the files are listed here. It denotes the thickness of each one. So if we had varying thicknesses of the individual components, we would see that here. It also means that they would be uh, nested on different thicknesses of board. Uh, you'll also see to the right, there is a quantity column. So from my assembly, it recognized that I have single quantities of many of these parts, and then some of them are actually doubled up. You can see there are another quantity. This also means that if I wanted to optimize the use of the sheet, this one assembly might only have two copies of body six. But if that was a component that is pretty common in my, in my product lines, I could increase the quantity here to better utilize the sheet that we're putting on our, on our machine. If I had an assembly of differing parts, the material will be recognized here as well, which also means that it would uh, isolate those to those individual sheets of that material as well. So the nest, nesting works will recognize the thickness and the material of the parts and then put them on their own sheets for that. So if we had similarly thickness of parts, but differing materials, those would go on individual sheets based off their material. If we take a look at the angles, we can see that we can give each part an individual step angle, essentially meaning that we're going to try and nest it in those individual uh, um, those individual orientations. Uh, and we'll see that once we get to the lower section. If I just keep continuing to scroll over to the right, we can also control grain direction for the individual components. So let's see how that works. I'm just going to click on the first one here. And you'll notice that it recognizes the thickness, although we could modify the thickness here if we wanted to. This is an easy way to kind of trick the system into individualizing the parts as well. Uh, let's say one of these components is actually three millimeters in thickness, 
but I want it to be on a separate board than the other ones. Maybe for purposes of grain direction or anything, uh, any of the aesthetic parameters of the bar uh, of the, um, the the boards that we're using. For whatever reason, I can trick it out to think that it's a different thickness completely. If I wanted more of this individual part, I can change the quantity. The grain direction is controlled either by the part itself, or you can see here the XY direction. So from our little preview here, we can see the XY direction um, on the part, and we have the ability here to denote which way is the grain direction on the board. Material as well. We can change the material here if it would make sense to do so. And the top face, if we were looking at the part, we would see that it shows us what it understands to be the top face. So for instance here, if this should be a mirrored looking uh, visual of what we see here, uh, I could just change the top face or the normal face to the other side and it would actually um, nest it in that orientation. But more importantly to the nesting is the rotation angle. So as this thing is being placed on the board and it's rotated to make sure that it can fit, uh, we have the ability to give it different angles to test out. We could either do that with a step angle or an actual part angle list. So in this case, it'll check the 45 and the 90 degree orientations to see if the part will fit, or I can just tell it to check every 90 degrees, or in my case, we'll just say every 45 degrees. That way it can confirm the part fits there no matter what angle it takes. If we go to sheet data, we have a couple of sheets here that we can add. Let me just remove these sheets here. When you're adding a sheet, you can define the thickness of the sheet, the quantities of the sheet, and the material of the sheet, as well as the grain direction as well. So that matches what you're with the parts you're trying to nest. And then the sheet sizes, if we go with the standard sheet, or we can go with the custom sheet size. In my case, I'm gonna say for this craft part, let's just say we're doing it on a 12 inch by 12 inch board. And let's just add that sheet. Now, right now, I'm giving it a quantity of one, but I don't know how many of these sheets I need to make my overall assembly. So that's why I've turned on Sheet Forecaster. This will give me the ability to define the sheet size, but once we actually go to generate the nest, it'll tell me how many of these sheets I actually need. If I go to the Options page, we can see the part-to-part -part distance, so the spacing between the, the parts. I'll define it as one millimeter and the spacing from the edges of the sheet. I'll define them as one millimeter as well. This is an easy way to define the distances between the parts for the purposes of separation. Uh, when you eventually put this on your laser, your water jet, or your plasma tables, uh, you might want some distance in between them so that you can put tabs in your operations on the cam side, or you might want some distances just so that you have something to, to remain behind uh, so you're not just uh, trimming the parts out and leaving uh, uh, very thin parts that are no longer useful to you. Uh, and then the sheet part to sheet distance, this is just the outside border of the part. This could be for your fixturing of that sheet on your table. So many reasons why you might want to change these values. And when it comes to part to sheet distance, we do have the ability to turn on the variable distances. In the case of the fact that maybe you're not holding on a complete outside border of your part, you might actually be holding your sheet down only on, on certain sides. If we wanted to generate the remnants of that sheet for use later, you have various abilities here to generate a DXF or a 3D model of the remaining uh, stock so that you can use it in future parts. If I wanted to make separate assemblies, or if I wanted to output the DXF version of that assembly uh, for the purposes of proprietary table software, like a water jet or a plasma table with its own proprietary cutting software, we have the ability to output the DXF for those purposes as well. But as soon as I click Preview Nest and go through the windows, I will be generating a SolidWorks assembly that I can then load into CamWorks. And lastly, under nesting type, you have the ability here to tell it fast nesting. So it'll just go through those angles that we've defined and it'll just try and figure out the best uh, optimized uh, nesting as is, or we can give it the optimal nesting, meaning that it'll go through all the parameters and it'll, it'll nest the part as I like, and I can give it a time frame for that calculation. So if it doesn't find the optimized nest between half a minute, one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes, then essentially, uh, it'll just generate whatever it currently has calculated. But if you want to optimize the nest, you have the ability to put on no constraints. This will not put a time limit on the calculation. It might take a lot of time depending on the parameters you've plugged in for the step angle. For instance, with optimal nesting, 
If I put in something very small here, then it'll optimize it as best as possible. It'll actually look through every iteration of that step code. But in our case, we'll do 45, and I'll just give it optimal nesting, and we'll see how it generates. So all you got to do now is just click on Preview Nest, and it will take a look at my individual parts, the thicknesses, the materials. It'll collect them onto the various sheets that I've defined. In this case, I've only defined one type of sheet, and it'll go through the calculation and lay them out and provide us with a SolidWorks assembly. And now what we get is a readout of the nesting. So if we took a, take a look at our nesting preview on a single sheet, 12 inches by 12 inches with a thickness of three millimeter, I was able to place all the parts. And that has a one millimeter border and one millimeter in between the parts. So if we take a look at this and we like the layout, we can click on create nested assembly. And what that'll do is it'll take those individual parts, lay them out on that sheet and create a SOLIDWORKS assembly. Since I also have CAMWORKS open, it'll, it'll open a CAMWORKS file of those parts, as you can see here. Do I want to proceed to using that in CAMWORKS? I'll say yes. Using assembly mode inside CAMWORKS, I can then program my part for use uh, on a plasma table, a water jet table, a router, uh, any of your uh, 2D, 2.5D style machinery. Okay, so if we rotate that around, you can see that we have our three millimeter parts. Every part of our T-Rex has been nested. And then from there, we can load it into CAMWorks for programming. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call on the main tech line found on our website. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll see you in future videos. Thanks for watching.